let's face it, nobody likes bad luck, but being blamed for somebody else's is even worse. However undeserved, that's the lot of the largest seabird in the world, the albatross. Its reputation comes from a great English poem, The Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner. The poem tells the story of a sailor who killed an albatross at sea. Suddenly, the wind stopped blowing and the ship couldn't reach port to get fresh water. Now, partly because of the poem, there is a widespread myth that it's disastrous to harm an albatross. Yet, despite their best efforts, fishermen and albatross still collide on the high seas today. It's a tragedy for the albatross, but bird curator Sandy Bartle does his best to make sure these birds did not die in vain. We've got 2,000 albatrosses uh, in the collection. Uh, some of them are skins, some of them are skeletons. It's the biggest collection of albatrosses in the world. So how do you get the birds? We sometimes get them from fishermen, but mostly from ordinary people, people who just find them accidentally dead. The specimens in our collection have got feathers on, obviously. In those feathers is encrypted a lot of chemical information about, first of all, the bird's relationship, genetic information. There's albatrosses in this room which died in the 1880s. And we can tell 120, over 120 years ago what that bird was eating. How do you make them last on a shelf? I mean, what do you do to them? Well, the ones that you see here have been turned right inside out. Uh, the, the body's been cut right down the front and all the meat's basically been taken out and they've been dried. They haven't been chemically treated or anything like that. Now, there's no point in stuffing these birds unless they're going to last. Insects pose the greatest danger. And that's the reason there's a real pungent odour coming out of these cupboards. It's a natural compound called camphor and it works like an insect repellent. Now, that's the reason this bird collection has been bug-free since 1930. These birds went down in history, literally. They were victims of the same storm that caused the Wahine ferry disaster in April 1968. The wind was so strong, 200 kilometres an hour, and uh, they were just blown against the cliffs and there were 96 of them, ended up at the museum. Some of them were alive, we let as many go as we could. I was working as a student at the museum in those days and I can remember uh, up in Wadestown I brought a couple down on the bus, uh, one in a backpack and one in a sack, and they were both live. And you know how people are in the morning waiting for the bus. They sort of, they sort of looked at this backpack and then there's this huge head and dark eye poking out of the top and sack with another huge head and a dark eye poking out and I just got on the bus and nobody actually he had the courage to ask me anything about them at all. Typical New Zealanders. Although the storm got the better of these birds, their bodies join this collection for future research. As one life ends, another is just starting for these albatross.